Hi, everyone. Welcome to Lawyers Info Hub. How is everything going? You're good. Hope you're fine. If you're yet to subscribe to the channel, please do hit the subscribe button, share the video, and like. So looking at how to draft a will. How to draft a will. You know, drafting a will of the is one of those briefs you can you know, be faced with or it can be brought to you by clients. You have clients that want to draft a will. You have people around you, family members that want to draft a will. And um, they are, you know, they've reached out to you. They have reached out to you and they, they are expecting you to do just that. But many people do not have idea of how to draft a will. So today we're going to look at how to draft a will and what the content of a will will be and um, you know how you would do it and do it well because we believe in excellence. Now, there are things you need to, you know, some information you need from the testator. The testator is the person who desires to have his will done or his will drafted for him. So you need to know the details of the testator, the uh, details of the properties he had, you know, the, the sort of have, you know, details in terms of, you know, landed properties, chattels, movable and immovable, um, you know, movable or immovable properties. Uh, you need to know um, who are those who are the beneficiaries, their details, their name, um, idea, you know, some preferences he has. You know, sometimes people differ someone can have a preference like so in, in a view somebody can even state how they want to be buried you know all those things just about a document that speaks when the person is no more so many people you know give details or they wanted to put in great details in their will you know so you need to perfect it you have to ask the person questions as to what exactly do you want how do you want this to be? How do you want the estate to be managed after your no more? Now, in drafting the will, the first part is the commencement part. This is the part where you state the name of the testator, the address of the testator. If the testator has a, 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 an alliance or a nickname, sometimes you can put it yes, you know, you know. So this is some before now you can say this is the last will and testament of Mr. XYZ. But now you can also just write simply, this last will is made by me. You state the name of the testator, state the, if it's a, a profession or the occupation. You also state the address of the testator and the date it was made, which I made dash 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 of year 20, you state it's the year. Now, you also have to understand that after the commencement, the next part you have to understand, you have to note very well in drafting a will is the revoc revocation clause. This revocation clause is that clause that revokes for a pension that was an earlier will or something the person has you know, noted as to this is how I want my properties or my estate to be managed after I'm no more. So the revocation clause, what it does is to revoke prevent any other thing that has in, in a, you know, that has a similar feature of a will that a person has done. So that revocation clause revokes that. You know, so every will must have a revocation clause. You know, now um, you just draft it like I revoke all previous wills and codices I have made. You know, but there are some cases who have never made a will before. We can still just put it for the sake of drafting. Um, that revocation clause revokes whatever will to be something the person says, something the person wrote. It may not be formal, it could just be something. So it revokes it. So you just said, I revoke all previous wills and codices I have made. You know, with respect to the management of my estate or with respect to all the properties I have. Now, another very crucial part of a will is appointment of executors and trustees. In a, every will must make provision for the appointment of executors who also serve as trustees. You know, they, they may also act as guidance for eventually the decision have infants as children. You know, the decision must appoint a minimum of two executors and a maximum of four. So you must note it if the decision is saying, I have uh, six people, I feel, you no, know, you say no, you can do a maximum of four and a minimum of two.
you know, uh, and these the executors must be people who are willing, you know, and who are capable of discharging the duties of executors, you know. So in a drafting, if you just say, I appoint as my executors and trustee, um, I appoint as executors and trustees of my will, Mr. So 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 of So So So, um, Mr. So 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 of So 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 address, and Mr. So 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 of So 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 address. So you state the name of the, you state the name of the executors, and you state the address of the executors. Now, it's also important to note that. Beyond stating the names of those executors, you have to say that there's another clause, which is the replacement clause. This is where you state that, peradventure, those people you have named as executors of the will are no longer able at some point or to function or to carry out the full duties of the executors, that you can replace them if you know, fulfill their vacancies with so, 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 so. This is where you maybe you can put the names of people who will feel but the main executors are not able to do their duties. I appoint so 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 person, you know, to replace, you know, any vacancy that may arise. So you can just say, I appoint to fill any vacancy, Mr. So 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 of number, state the address of the person. Now, that's a charging clause, is a clause you know, this clause, the charging clause is for the benefit of any professional who was engaged or appointed, uh, who is appointed an executor. You know, the you now such executor is not permitted to charge just usual professional and other fees for jobs that are done in the performance, you know, of um, the duties of the of an executor. You know, so that charging clause is usually placed in a wheel. You know, we can just note it can be like any executor being a solicitor or other persons engaged in a profession. Or business shall be entitled to be, to a charge, and they'll be paid. <coughs> excuse me, all usual professional fees or other charges or for businesses done. So that charging clause is usually there for all professionals that were engaged in carrying out only two, two duties as executors. So that charging clause is important. Then you have the trustee power. You know, the the state can confer special powers on the trustees that are not confirmed by the you know you have the trustee investment act so the trustees the the sector can confer special powers on the trustees they will not have the legacies and the gift you know the we will provide for all the legacies and who are the beneficiaries of the legacy now um, there are various types of legacies. I've done a video on the various types of legacies. You can check it up on our channel. You know, I can also leave the description, um, the link to the description box for you to see it. Um, so usually under the legacies, you can say, I give so, so, so to my son, my daughter. You know, this is where the person now, all the people he wants to give gifts, all the people he wants to give things, you know, he will now give them. You know, you will not give them all the people you want to give them. You will give them uh, things. Now, have the residual gift. This clause provides for how the remaining properties the testator was not that have not that was not given out to be displayed. You know, after the testator have given all the gift, sometimes maybe something is remaining that has not been given. You know, we cannot have the residual gift clause. We can say, I give the rest of my estate to my executors and trustees to hold on to maybe pay the debts I owe taxes or testamentary expenses. Remember uh, under the gifts or under the legacies, if there are conditions attached to gifts, uh, the testator can say, uh, my son will take over my company when he attains the age of 25 or when he's done with his master's degree program. I give my daughter this, this uh, provided you know, she is married. You know, that sometimes there are conditions, these are called conditional legacies that are attached to some gift. So these are now where in stating out what you're giving to the beneficiary, you still also state the conditions attached to this gift as the instructed by the testator. So we have the, the residual clause, which is the 
or the ritual gift clause, which is the clause that you know gives the remainder of the estate, you know, out maybe to the executors, you know, for the management of payment of taxes, testamentary expenses, and all that. You know, in, in many views, you can see that the testator can give instruction as to how they want their burial to, you know, to, to be taken care of. You know, uh, you can now say I direct the executors and trustees to settle all debts and funeral expenses. You can wish their, you know, you can make funeral wishes, you know, as per the church that will bury the, the church that will bury him or her. Uh, the officiating priest, a lot of things, you know, it, it's more like the wish of a tessetor. So all those petty things, the musical bed, the undertakers, the place they'll be buried, all those things can be contained in a will. You know, now, if the tessetor has infant children, you know, he can also appoint a guardian for those children. He can say, I nominate and appoint Mr. So-so-so or so-so address you know, to be the guardian for my underage children until my children are of full legal age. Now, you know, the, you know now we have the testimonium, uh, we have the testimonium uh, clause, which says in witness of which I, this is where the, you know, you state the, that's called it the testimonium clause. Uh, you just you can draft it in witness of which I, under the testimonium clause, they will have the execution and attestation clause, you know, uh, a will must be executed according to law. It is not executed like the way it is executed in a deed. Uh, it can just, the execution can just read, signed by me, in the name of the testator. Remember that if the testator is an illiterate or blind or deaf or, you know, the jurat has to be inserted. Now the name, you know, signature, address, occupation, you know, of at least two witnesses must be provided. So it has to be attested uh, to by two witnesses at least. You know, so um that now brings an end to your draft to your to your will. So you have to know the from how it is going to comment, um, then the revocation or the different parts of uh, the will I've explained and how to draft it. Now, when it comes to the legacies or the gift, you must represent the wish of the testator, how you want he wants the gift to be given for adventure sometimes it is also can give a gift and said if this i give my wife for example so 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 uh provided she still remains my wife or my widow or uh, once my wife remarries she loses sometimes a a the sister can give gifts just like i said earlier today based on conditions and they must note it as they have already you know as the sister has given the instruction and there are gifts two people will share and there are things that you know bank accounts and all of that so you must know them very well and express it in the most simplest language that even an illiterate or a, 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 a person that's not learning can understand now the thesis of sign and he has a witness but it's two witnesses so friends perhaps the will is not too difficult you know you must get the right instructions you must get the right information you need and you represent it in the will and remember that a draft your test the tester must see the draft read it and say okay this is what i want before it is what is executed and then you can go in and lodge your will you know go to the probate section of the high court and lodge your will the lodging lodgement process is not so difficult some of them have been computerized you know even if they're using the manual um, arrangement in your jurisdiction it's not so difficult to lodge your will it's also very important the sealing of the will and the lodgement so friends i just hope you've been able to learn something to learn how to draft a will is a very vital in document that a lot of lawyers you know have drafted and are still going to draft you know so you have to have an idea per adventure you've never you know drafted anyone so you have an idea of what it should contain and how you are going to do it. So, uh, friends, I hope you enjoyed today's class. Do take care of yourself and know that it can always be the best. Just put your heart to, to whatever you're doing, be diligent, and you see yourself at the top soon. Take care of yourself. Yeah, bye. -bye.